in a bustling world of industries where innovation reigns supreme, one process stands out for its remarkable impact on materials is surface coating. This comprehensive and indispensable technique finds widespread application across various sectors to improve the properties and performance of a material surface. Through surface coating, it becomes possible to customize an object's surface attributes, encompassing aspects like appearance, functionality, durability, and its ability to withstand wear, corrosion, and environmental elements. Surface coatings offer a multitude of objectives which encompass protection. Coatings act as a protective shield guarding against corrosion, abrasion, chemical attacks, and environmental elements. By safeguarding underlying materials, coatings extend the longevity of products and infrastructure. Decoration. Surface coatings serve decorative purposes, elevating the visual appeal of products and making them more attractive to consumers. Functionality. Coatings can introduce new functionalities to materials, such as imparting hydrophobic properties, electrical conductivity, or heat resistance. Lubrication. In specific applications, coatings provide low-friction surfaces, reducing wear and enhancing the efficiency of mechanical systems. Insulation. Coatings find application in providing electrical or thermal insulation in specific contexts. Adhesion. Surface coatings improve the adhesion of paints, adhesives, or other substances to the substrate, ensuring better bonding and overall performance. There are many types of surface coatings, each with its own specific properties and applications. Some common types of surface coatings include paints and varnishes, used for decoratives and protective purposes and various substrates. Corrosion-resistant coatings protect metals from chemical and environmental corrosion. Electroplating, a process in which a metal coating is deposited on a conductive surface through electrolysis. Anodizing, an electrochemical process that enhances the oxide layer and metals like aluminum. Powder coatings, applied as a dry powder and cured to form a durable finish. Thermal spray coatings, Depositing melted or heated materials on a surface to create a protective layer. PVD, physical vapor deposition, and CVD, chemical vapor deposition coatings, are thin film coatings applied in vacuum environments. The proper selection and application of coatings will transform the performance, longevity, and aesthetics of products and components across industries like automotives, aerospace, electronics, constructions, and beyond. Surface coatings is an indispensable ally, empowering industries to unlock the true potential of materials. With its ability to protect, beautify, and revolutionize functionalities, coatings pave the way for a brighter and more resilient future. During the prehistoric era, Early humans began experimenting with surface coating as a means of protection, decoration, and tool enhancement. With limited resources and primitive tools, they discovered natural materials that could be applied to various surfaces, leading to the birth of some basic coating products. Animal fat coating is used to protect leather materials and wooden tools from moisture and decay. Beeswax sealants is applied on pottery to make it waterproof and enhance its durability. Lastly, archer pigment coatings is used to add color and decoration to cave paintings and rock art. In ancient civilizations, surface coating evolved from simple pigments to more advanced techniques, showcasing the continuous human quest for beauty, protection, and practicality. Various Asian cultures developed unique methods and materials for surface coating, leaving behind a rich legacy of artistic expression and functional innovations. Here are the products during Asian civilizations. Egyptian varnishes made from tree resins and used to protect and embellish wooden furniture and sculptures. Chinese lacquerware is a craftsman applied to lacquer extract from the sap of the lacquer tree to create durable and decorative coatings for pottery and wooden items. 
Mesopotamian bitumen coatings is used to waterproof boats and seal containers. During the Middle Ages, surface coating history witnessed a continuation of Asian techniques and the emergence of new methods influenced by cultural exchanges and technological advancements. Coating during this period served both decorative and practical purposes, enriching the artistic expression and protection of various surfaces. The products during the Middle Ages are Closime Animal is an intricate animal coatings applied to metal objects like jewelry and religious artifacts. Next is Lama Juice Animal is a fine animal coatings on copper objects popular during the medieval period in Europe. Lastly is the Islamic Minakare is an animal word used to decorate metalware like vases, plates, and bowls. The Renaissance period was a remarkable time in surface coating history, marked by a resurgence of art, science, and innovation. During this era, significant advancements were made in the development of painting techniques and materials, leading to a revolution in the world of surface coatings. Oil paintings is an artist used to layers of oil-based paint and varnish to protect and enhance their artwork. Gilded artwork is a gold leaf coatings applied to sculptures and decorative items to add a luxurious touch. Lastly, decorative varnishes is used to protect and enhance the beauty of wooden furniture and musical instruments. The 18th century was a period of significant progress and transformation in surface coating history. Advancements in science, technology, and trade led to the development of new coating materials and techniques, revolutionizing various industries and elevating the quality and durability of coatings. Shoelac is a natural resin coating derived from the lac beetle, use a wood finish and sealer. Next is white lead paint, is a popular lead-based paint used for various applications despite later discovered health hazards. Lastly is the vernis martin. It is a type of varnish used for decorative lacquer work and furniture finishing popular during the Rococo period. The 19th century was a dynamic period in surface coating history. It is marked by significant technological advancement and a growing understanding of chemistry. Innovations in coating materials and application methods continued to expand, catering to diverse industries and driving further progress in the art and science of surface coatings. Here are the products during the 19th century. Bakelite coatings is used to insulate electrical components and protect them from moisture and heat. Iron clod ships is an early naval vessel coated with iron to protect against corrosion and damage. Lastly is the Shulak Gramophone Records. It is a coating of Shulak on vinyl records for improved sound quality and durability. The early 20th century witnessed a revolution in surface coating history, driven by a scientific breakthroughs, industrialization, and the growing demand for more advanced and diverse coating materials. Innovations during this period laid the groundwork for modern coating industry and the expanded applications of coatings across various sectors. Automotive animal paints is introduced for coating cars, offering improved durability and a variety of colors. Next is alkyd oil paints. It is a quick drying and durable oil-based paints used for both artistic and industrial purposes. Lastly is an insulating varnishes. It is used for coating electrical components and wires to prevent electrical leakage. The mid-20th century mark a period of rapid progress and significant advancements in surface coating history. The aftermath of World War II and a growing focus on industrialization and technology brought forth a wave of innovation in coating materials, 
processes and applications shaping the modern coating industry as we know it today. Here are the products during the mid-20th century. Acrylic wall paints, it is a water-based, durable, and quick-drying paints used for interior and exterior applications. Next is a powder-coated appliances. It is a metal appliance coated with the powdered paint and baked to create a durable, smooth finish. Lastly is the epoxy flooring. It is a top and chemical resistant coatings used in industrial and commercial settings. The late 20th century continued the trend of rapid progress and innovation in surface coating history. Advancement in technology, environmental awareness, and global markets drove significant developments leading to the widespread adoption of pre coating materials and application methods. Low VOC paints is a water-based and solvent free paints with reduced volatile organic compounds for reduced environmental impact. UV curable coatings is a coating that cure instantly under ultraviolet light used in printing and electronics industries. Lastly, scratch-resistant eyeglass coating is a thin coating applied to lenses to improve durability and clarity. The 21st century has been a dynamic and transformative period in surface coating history. Driven by cutting-edge technology, sustainability goals, and evolving consumer demands, this century witnessed revolutionary advancements that have reshaped the coating industry. Here are the products during the 20th century. Self-healing car paint. It is a coating that automatically repairs minor scratches and blemishes with heat or light exposure. Next is hydrophobic coatings. It is a water repellent coating applied to car windshields, clothing, and electronic devices. Lastly is the antimicrobial coatings used in healthcare settings and high touch surfaces to inhibit the growth of harmful microorganisms. Now let's proceed with drying oil. Drying oil can undergo a chemical process called oxidation and polymerization, forming a tough, protective, and solid film. This film results from the oil molecules combining with oxygen from the air and cross-linking. The main component of drying oil is glycerol triesters of fatty acids. Now let's proceed to the process flow chart of drying oil manufacturing. The manufacturing process of drying oil, specifically using acetylated castor oil as the feedstock, involves a chemical modification called acetylation. This process enhances the drying properties of the oil, making it a suitable for making it suitable for various applications such as paints, varnishes, and coating. The production of drying oil starts with the feed preparation in which the oil typically obtained from castor beans through a pressing or extraction process is conditioned and prepared to undergo further processing. The acetylated castor oil or ACO feed is mixed with the recycled ACO and passed through a vessel that helps maintain constant flow downstream of the mixing point. This process is followed by fired heating with a temperature that allows the reaction to proceed. Methane is produced during heating and the said natural gas provides energy used in reheating doTERM A or E-502. Acetylation reaction occurs in the R-501 or the reactor wherein castor oil is reacted with acetic anhydride or acetic acid in the presence of a catalyst, usually an acid or a base. The reaction substitutes hydrogen atoms in the oil with acetyl groups. This acetylation process modifies the oil's chemical structure, increasing its ability to polymerize and form a solid form when exposed to air. Filtration occurs in F-501 or gum filter, allowing the removal of colloids produced by the reaction of phospholipids, proteins, phlegmatic, sugar, and triglycerides. After filtration, 
the oil undergoes distillation in T-501 with a pressure determined by the constraint of limiting the temperature of the bottom column by 300 degrees Celsius. The contents of distillate proceed to a heat exchanger developing a condensed and saturated liquid that is transfer transferred to another heat exchanger producing saturated vapor at a column pressure determined by the temperature constraint at the bottom of the column in which it is recycled. The pressure of the vaporized downstream in ACO's vapor pressure at the bottom temperature constraint. The, do the dough term enters a 380 degrees Celsius and leaves at 360 degrees Celsius. It must be reheated to 380 degrees Celsius in the fired heater. The dough term temperature must be above the temperature of vaporizing stream as the liquid proceeds to T-502 or another distillation column, acetic acid is formed in which 99.5% goes to an exiting stream and drying oil is extracted leading to a 99.5% byproduct. The said distillation column operates in an atmospheric pressure. The drying oil is further dried and purified to ensure the final product meets the desired quality and specifications. This step helps remove any remaining water or impurities that might affect the perform performance of the drying oil. Like any other product, drying oil undergoes quality control to ensure the efficiency of the product before packaging and distribution. Paint is typically made from a combination of raw materials including solvents, pigments, binders, and additives. These raw materials are carefully selected and combined in precise proportions to create the desired properties and characteristics in finished paint. Paint is a liquid or semi-liquid mixture of various substances applied to surfaces to provide color, protection, and decoration. It is one of the most common and versatile materials used in multiple industries such as construction, art, and manufacturing. Pigments are the colorants that give the paint its color, while the additives are substances added to the paint to, to improve its performance or alter its properties. To prepare these raw materials for use in paint manufacturing, they must undergo several processing steps. This typically involves grinding and mixing the pigments and other ingredients to create a homogeneous mixture. The resulting paint base is then packaged and shipped to paint manufacturers where it is further processed and combined with additional ingredients to create the final paint product. The paint manufacturing process typically involves the following step. The first step is in the paint manufacturing process is the preparation of raw materials. These include pigments, binders, solvents, and additives that will be used to create the desired paint color and properties. The selection of raw materials is crucial to the quality of the final product and manufacturers carefully choose each component to ensure that it meets their specification. Second, once the raw materials have been selected, they are carefully mixed and blended in the proper proportions to create the base paint mixture. This is typically done using large industrial mixing equipment such as blenders or additators to ensure thorough and consistent mixing. After the base paint mixtures has been created, it must be ground and milled to achieve the desired consistency and smoothness. This is typically done using a mill, which can be either a horizontal or vertical roller mill. The paint is fed into the mill where it is ground and milled until it reaches the desired consistency. The last step in the paint manufacturing process is packaging and shipping the finished product to customers. Paint is typically packaged in containers such as cans or drums and shipped to retailers or direct customers. Overall, the paint manufacturing process is a complex and highly controlled 
one that involves a wide range of steps and materials to produce a high quality product. It involves preparing, mixing, grinding, coloring, filtering, and packing. Then manufacturers can provide a wide range of durable and attractive paint coatings for a variety of applications. Good day everyone. I am Debbie Matwanwa and today I will be discussing the manufacturing process of varnish. But first, what is a varnish? A varnish is a transparent or translucent liquid coating that is applied to various surfaces to provide protection, enhance appearance, and improve durability. Varnishes can be made from different materials, including natural substances like tree resins or synthetic compounds like acrylics, and they come in various formulations to suit specific applications. Varnishes can either be solvent-based or water-based. Solvent-based varnishes typically use organic solvents like mineral spirits or turpentine, while water-based varnishes use water as a primary solvent, making them more environmentally friendly with lower VOC emissions. Here are some of the primary pur purposes of varnishing. Protection, enhancement, preservation, sealant, and aesthetic appeal. Varnishes are widely used in parts industries and applications, and here are some of them. First is in the industrial use. With the rise of industrialization and the development of new materials, varnishes found applications beyond art conservation. They were used to protect and seal various surfaces, including wood and furniture, floors, ships, and industrial equipment. Second is woodworking. Varnishes are commonly applied to wooden furniture, floors, and cabinetry to protect them from wear and enhance their appearance. Lastly is the automotive industry. In the automotive sector, clear coat varnishes are used as a final and protective layer over carping, providing shine and protection against elements. The manufacturing process of varnish in the paint industry involves several key steps. While the specific methods and ingredients can vary depending on the desired properties of the varnish, here is a general outline of the manufacturing process. First is the raw material selection. The first step is to select the raw materials that will form the base of the varnish. Common components include oils, such as linseed oil, soybean oil or tongue oil, resins such as alkyd resins or acrylic resins, solvents like mineral spirits or turpentine, and additives such as drying agents, UV stabilizers, and pigments for color varnishes. Second is mixing and heating. The selected oils and resins are mixed in precise proportions to achieve the desired properties of the varnish. The mixture is then heated to a specific temperature, typically in a reactor, to promote polymerization and create a more stable and durable product. Third is the solvent addition. Once the oils and resins are properly mixed and heated, solvents are added to the mixture. Solvents serve to reduce the viscosity of the varnish, making it easier to apply and providing a smoother finish when the varnish is dried. Fourth is the addition of additives. Various additives are incorporated into the varnish formulation to improve its performance. For example, drying agents may be added to accelerate the curing process, while UV stabilizers help protect the varnish from sunlight-induced degradation. Fifth is the filtration. The varnish mixture is filtered to remove any impurities or particles that may have formed during the manufacturing process. Filtration ensures a consistent and high-quality product. Sixth is quality control. Before packaging, the varnish undergoes rigorous quality control checks. These tests assess factors like viscosity, drying time, color, and other properties to ensure the varnish meets the specific standards. Lastly is the packaging. 
The final varnish product is packaged in two containers, such as cans or bottles, ready for distribution and use. Overall, the manufacturing process of varnish in the paint industry requires precision, adherence to quality standards, and consideration of the intended applications of the varnish product.